Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, these first two clips you're going to see are in Macon, Georgia, of those two cool bridges that I saw while I was down there making a delivery. <coughs> Excuse me. Especially this one here. I love the arches in this one. It's just pretty neat. Today we're going to be studying out of Luke chapter 15. We're going to talk about lost sheep. So I'm going to go ahead and just start reading, and uh, we'll add to it as we go. Hopefully you will get something out of this and it will make your day a little brighter and your walk with the Lord a little closer. So here we go. Then drew near unto him all the publicans and sinners for to hear him. And the Pharisees and the scribes were murmuring, saying, This man receiveth sinners and eats with them. And he spoke this parable unto them, saying, What man of you, having a hundred sheep, if he lose one of them, doth not leave the ninety and nine in the wilderness and go after that which is lost until he find it. And when he hath found it, he layeth it on his shoulders, rejoicing. And when he cometh home, he calleth together his friends and neighbors, saying unto them, Rejoice with me, for I have found my sheep which was lost. I say unto you that likewise joy shall be in heaven over one sinner that repenteth. For more than over ninety and nine just... Sorry, I messed that up. More than over ninety and nine just persons which need no repentance. Either what woman having ten pieces of silver, if she lose one piece doth not light a candle and weep in the house and sweep the house and seek diligently till she find it and when she hath found it she calleth her friends and her neighbors together saying rejoice with me for i have found the peace which i had lost likewise i say unto you there is joy in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner that repenteth. Now, when, the, when I read that, it says peace. I know it's talking about a piece of silver, but in my mind, too, it goes to peace, like peace on earth, uh, inner peace, when, when, when you find God and when God finds you and you come together. It just, it's such a peaceful feeling. I mean, you know, that's just, you know, from... From my standpoint. All right. And he said, A certain man had two sons. And the younger of them said unto his father, Father, give me the portion of goods that falleth to me. And he divided unto them his living. And not many days after, the younger son gathered all together and took his journey into a far country, and there wasted his substance with riotous living. And when he had spent all there, arose a mighty famine in the land, and he began to be in want. And he went and joined himself to a citizen of that country, and sent him into the fields to feed the swine. And he would fain have, have filled his belly with the husk that the swine did eat, and no man gave unto him. And when he came, into the, came to himself, he said, How many hired servants of my father's have bread enough to spare, and I perish with hunger. I will arise and go to my father, and will say unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before thee, and I am no more worthy to be called thy son. Make me as one of thy hired servants. And he arose and came to his father, but when he was yet a great way off, his father saw him and had compassion and ran and fell on his neck and kissed him. And the son said unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and in thy sight and am no more worthy to be called thy son. But the father said to his servants, Bring forth the best robe and put it on him and put a ring on his hand and shoes on his feet and bring hither the fatted calf and kill it and let us eat and be merry. For this my son was dead and is alive, and he was lost and is found, and they began to be merry. Now the older son was in the field, and he, and as he came and drew near to the house, he heard music and dancing, 
And he called one of the servants and asked what these things meant. And he said unto him, Thy brother is come, and thy father hath killed the fatted calf, because he hath received him safe and sound. And he was angry and would not go in. Therefore came his father out and entreated to him. And he answered and said unto his father, Lo, these many years do I serve thee. Neither transgressed I at any time thy commandment. And yet thou never gavest me a kid that I might make merry with my friends. But as soon as thy son came, was come, which hath devoured thy living with harlots, thou hast killed for him the fatted calf. And he said unto him, Son, thou art ever with me, and all that I have is thine. It was meet that we should make merry and be glad, for this thy brother was dead and is alive again, and was lost and is found. I should cue in Amazing Grace right here because we were lost, now we're found. We were blind, but now we see. Amazing Grace. How great thou art. Ladies and gentlemen, I mean, that just, I mean, it makes me get in my feels because I've been that prodigal son. I have been out there. I knew God. I left and I came back. I knew God from an early age. I was introduced early. I had the feeling. I was totally saved. And I wavered. And I went with the world because of my environment because of the way things were and you know God gave me a choice at some point in my early life to do right or not to do right I'm not going to go into the details of that uh, but the choice was given and I believe I've made the right one I came back to the Lord I have a family I have a job I'm doing the best I can to stay in church and stay in the Word. Every day is a struggle. Every day is not going to be easy as a Christian. There's going to be times when you're like, man, this is tough. But you got to hold in there. You got to keep going to the bitter end to work for the Lord and be the best that you can be. You're going to fall. You're going to fail. You're going to do things that you wish you never, ever done before. But you keep trying to do better. Have that relationship with the Lord, you know. It's, it's a commitment on a total spiritual level. That you will never leave Him. You will never forsake Him. You will love Him forever, no matter what. That is the level of commitment Jesus wants from you. He wants you to accept him fully and to be with him fully, to be his friend forever. The Holy Trinity is there for you. Everything you have was given to you as a blessing from the Lord. When you think about it, the punishment that we talked about last week of hell, the best day on earth in the worst prison on earth is better than any day in hell. And God gives us that choice to choose between the two, the eternal reward or the eternal punishment, the fire that is never quenched. This is a no brainer. But so many people fall prey to the devil that tricks them into believing that he does not exist. And that this is all just came by by a big bang. It just, woof, there it is. That ain't how it happened. We did not come from evolution. We were divinely and intentionally made wonderful in the image of our Almighty God. And that's a fact. You can let people talk and they will mock you. 
But in the end, we know how it is. We, as Christians, will be in heaven, and those who mock the Lord and blaspheme against the Lord and many other things it mentions in the Bible will not inherit the kingdom of heaven, and they will be punished. So let's let's reach them, and let's not let them be punished. But that's all for today. I appreciate y'all listening. I hope you got something great from this. May God bless each and every one of you far and beyond your wildest dreams. I'll catch you on the next ride.